Hello, this is Cat's Diamond Painting. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've joined me here before. Today I am going to be doing a quick post review of this painting here and then kitting it down. Shouldn't take too long because it's quite a small painting, not too many colours. So as you'll have seen from the title, this is Otter. Isn't he sweet? <laughs> So this is a round drill painting from Diamond Art Club. Um, I did show this on a recent video, but other than that, it hasn't been on the channel a lot. I didn't do my usual kitting up video for this one because it was a painting that I bought to work on with my son. He absolutely loves otters. So this came out in ooh, I don't know, about July, maybe. And I saw it and I just knew he was going to want to have it. And I showed him, I was like, please, mummy, can we get it? And we'll work on it together. And I kind of, I knew how that was going to go. But anyway, <laughs> it came and he was really keen to get going with it. So we kitted it up together, which was fun. Nice little project. We started working on it together. He did a fair bit over in this corner here. Um, I've straightened it up a little bit, but he, he did an excellent job. But then sort of, as I predicted really, he then lost interest <laughs> and didn't want to do any more. So most of this was done by me to get it finished for him. But anyway, that's why it hasn't been on the channel that much because I was doing those early things with him. Um, and I actually finished it back in November um, and just haven't quite got round to kitting it down yet. So I didn't do the post review yet either. So I've actually shown this before now on my quarter four review video um, where I rounded up everything that I completed from October to December in 2022 and, and my, my whips going into January. So I, I feel like I'm this is a bit back to front because <laughs> I'm so behind on doing this post review. But you may well not have seen my quarter four review video. If you haven't, please do check it out, um, but I'll cover off some of the same sorts of things as I said here, but just fairly briefly. Um, so yeah, that's where I chose it. It's not one that I would necessarily normally go for because whilst I think the art is adorable, I like paintings with lots of colours and lots of variety of colours. And this one only has 23 colours, if you can see down there. Um, so I knew it would get quite samey. But as I said, I had a different reason for choosing this one. And to be honest, that was that was fun too. It's probably the first time that I've bought a painting because someone else I know would want it and then done it for them and got to see, you know, their experience of it. So um, it worked up fairly quickly because all of the water is obviously very heavy on colour blocking. The middle section was a lot slower going. Um, let me bring this up to show you some of the detail. And I don't know how easy it is to pick out how much colour changing there was in there because some of the colours are very similar to each other for depth of shading. But that otter was heavy on confetti. Um, sorry, I just knocked the camera there. If you, if you got a bit seasick for a moment, that was my fault. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I work on my paintings in rows on my easel. So I did a row, a row, a row, a row. And when I was doing these middle rows, I did find that although I was enjoying the painting a lot, I tended to do a row or two and then put it away for a bit of a break because it was just a lot of heavy confetti all in varying shades of brown. And that got a little bit much. <laughs> It is very, very sparkly. I feel like this, I mean, I seem to say this all the time, but it seems like one of the most sparkly paintings I've ever done. Um, these round drills from Diamond Art Club are just magnificent the way they catch the light. And the otter is also very liberally sprinkled with AB drills. Um, so Aurora Borealis drills that have an extra special coating. Let me show you those. So you can see a lot of these bits here see how they catch the light and also in his eyes there are some orange abs. I have to say his eyes were one thing that I didn't absolutely love I mean not enough to change it but they're, they're orange and yeah there's just <laughs> something a little bit freaky about them <laughs> um another thing I mentioned in my quarterly review video when I was talking about this painting is that Diamond Art Club, around the time this came out, changed their canvases. Now, I don't have a picture of the canvas. So I'll have to try and explain what I mean. Round paintings, um, some companies have what we call guide circles. Some don't. A guide circle is when there is a, a faint 
outline of a round drill on the grid so that you have a really specific guide for where to aim your drills. Some companies will just leave it as a little square and then you place your round drill within that. Diamond Art Club used to have quite pronounced guide circles. Now, I liked that personally because yes, if you didn't place your drill perfectly, you could see more around it, but it helped me to place my drills better. So that it, it sort of wasn't a problem if you see what I mean. Um, as I understand it, a lot of people really don't like that and they prefer fainter guide circles or no guide circles at all. So that if their um, placement is just a, a little bit less exact, um, you don't see the outlines of different colours and lines and things showing on the canvas and ruining the effect. And I understand that too. So Diamond Art Club changed around this time. This was my first canvas where the guide circles were much paler. So all of the symbols are quite clear and neat. You know, a lot of them are numbers and letters. All the symbols are very clear ones. Um, and they would be just a block like that with a very, very, very faint guide circle on it. Whereas in the past, they might have differed slightly from the drills. I don't know how well I'm explaining that, but basically it just meant the guide circles were still there, but much less obvious. Now at the start of it, I really wasn't enjoying that to be honest. Um, I felt like my drills were going a lot wonkier and I was finding it a bit frustrating. By the end, I feel like I had adapted and got used to it and that end went a lot straighter and easier so if you don't like the change as some people don't if you persevere you're probably going to get used to it and overall it seems to be a popular change amongst most customers so you can see why they've done it um so quality of drills um very sparkly as i've said not too much trash And they were the usual suspects, um, you know, just what you get with resin drills. So there were ones with um, holes in them, a few with like tabs, um, a few just misshapen ones. Nothing too major whatsoever. Um, and I had plenty of drills. I didn't run out of anything. So that's all that matters at the end of the day, isn't it? If you've got enough good quality drills to complete the painting, it doesn't really matter. So yeah, um, I got this storage case for this kit because it was perfect for it because I had 23 pots that I needed and then I had seven spare which I used so that for the colours that had more drills than would fit into one of these, I at one stage had a separate one of these going for each of those. Um, so I had everything in here in pots and then I could just switch them over when I ran out. So that went really well. And yeah, I um I just think it's a really, really sweet painting. I haven't really covered off the stats. So um it's by an artist called Patrick La Montagne, and it was 59 by 43 centimetres, so a fairly small painting. And my son is delighted with it. Um we're gonna put this up in his room at some stage. Actually, to be honest, his room because uh, he's got a big notice board on his biggest wall. Um, I don't know that he has room for it at the moment, but we are planning to move him into a different bedroom in our house. What is currently the spare bedroom and has a double bed in it will become his bedroom as he gets a bit older. So I think it will maybe go on the wall then. But yeah, this was a really fun project. I enjoyed it a lot. It's nice to have done a painting that I wouldn't normally go for as such um, and to be really happy with the finished result. So... I am now going to kit this down. I hope you'll stick around and do a bit of a kit and chat with me. You know, grab your own diamond painting or whatever you're working on today um, and do that while I just have a chat to you about what's been up with me recently. Mainly I thought I'd catch you up on how my Christmas went uh, and I'll just get these drills kitted down so that I can use this storage case for another painting I'm planning to pick up soon. Right, I've turned off my ring light so that there's not loads of glare, so hopefully it's not too dark. Um, right, so the first thing I've done is I have gone through my existing spare drill storage. Um, so I'm, I'm not 
putting the whole process on here because I feel like I've repeated that in a lot of videos. But basically I have an Excel spreadsheet on my laptop where I keep a record of all the spare drills that I have, where I've kept leftovers from all the kits I've worked on. So that if I ever need to know if I do have a particular color, I can just pull up that spreadsheet easily on my phone and check it really easily that way. So I've gone through that and I've added the colors from this kit to my spreadsheet. And then I've sorted them in order of the DMC number. And then where I found I now have two rows for a colour, that tells me I have previously put away some spare drills in that colour. Um, so I've dug out those drills. So these are all from my big bag of spare drills. And these are the ones I'm going to kit down first because I can just match up the colours from this kit with the ones I previously have. And that just makes things go a bit quicker. Although I will say this bag of black drills is full and I do not need any more spares so I think those can just go in my junk jar. This is what I mean by my junk jar. In fact I will do these as well. So my trash drills just go in here for no particular reason other than I think it's kind of pretty and cool to look at when they're all in there. I can put my Black drills in there as well, because there's just no need to keep those. Right, I need something to put these sticky labels on. Bear with me. Okay, I've just got a tissue that I can stick them to and then put them in the bin afterwards. So I have these all in DMC order, so it should be fairly straightforward. And I just have a tray that I'll do it over so that if I spill any, they're just a bit more contained. So how was your Christmas and New Year? It's been a long time since I've done a sort of chatty video. Um, I think I was talking about things like my son's birthday last time I, I did one of these. So yeah, we had, um, we had a lovely Christmas break. My son broke up from school on the 20th of December, so not too long before Christmas, really. Um, and we had a couple of days of just, you know, getting ready at home, um, sorting, you know, last bits of shopping. And um, we went to this Christmas barn that's nearby. And it's just this place that has a barn and they have some reindeer that we go visit every year. Um, they had more this year. I think they had three where they've only had two before. Um, oh, that drill wouldn't come out. Um, and they have a little shop there. And often, I mean, we didn't on this occasion because it was late in the year and we already had our tree up. But previously, we've, we've bought some nice decorations there and that kind of thing. And then on the 23rd of December, we went to my husband's family for Christmas. So we have pretty much, ever since my husband and I started living together, um, so we were spending Christmases together, we've just alternated. Apart from, you know, something's going a little bit wonky the last few years with the pandemic, um, where we haven't always gone away, we just alternate every year. And this year was the year to be with my husband's family. And we hadn't been there since 2018 because of everything that's gone on. So... It was really nice. The whole family was there. Um, so that's my parents-in-law, uh, my two brothers-in-law, um, their wives and girlfriends, and one brother-in-law and his girlfriend have two daughters. So the last time we were there um, for Christmas, none of them had been born. <laughs> and now one of them is three and the other was four weeks old. <laughs> So we actually got to meet her for the first time at Christmas and that was really lovely. Um, everything's going well, they're, uh, you know, doing as, as well as, as can be expected. Obviously very tired, not getting a lot of sleep, but everything in general was going well. So we caught up with people a bit on the 23rd and then on the 24th, um, we have a bit of a tradition when we're there that we go out for a meal on Christmas Eve because it's my father-in-law's birthday on Christmas Day. But Christmas Day is Christmas Day, and he's not bothered anyway. Um, so what we do is we go and have a meal out on the, the Christmas Eve, and that's his, his main birthday celebration. So we went out and did that. That was fun. We had some nice food. 
um, saw my husband's nan, um, and yeah, and then it was on with Christmas Eve, just, you know, trying to wear the kids out, my, my son, <laughs> he got so excited in the evening, he wanted to go to bed, like, super early, but it wasn't because he was tired, it was because he wanted to make the next day come quicker, and we were actually putting him off, which, you know, feels pretty backwards, <laughs> putting your child off and going to bed, but he was wired, there was no chance he was going to sleep. So we did all that, put him off a bit, then eventually it got to a more normal sort of bedtime and he just, yeah, exactly what we'd been worried about happened and he could not sleep. It's got really dark in this room suddenly. I'm going to go turn an extra light on. Yeah, you know how it is when you can't sleep and you get all sort of uncomfortable and fidgety lying there and yeah. I think it was some point after half 12 when he eventually dropped off, bless him. And he, he's the kind of child that does fairly well on not much sleep, so he was all right the next day, but yeah, <laughs> wasn't the best start to it all. And then Christmas Day, we got up, we did um, sort of, well, not stockings, um, we have like a Santa bag. So when I grew up, my parents would put an empty pillowcase on our beds for Father Christmas to put some presents in, and then there would be more presents under the tree downstairs. My husband's family don't do the pillowcases or stockings. They just have presents downstairs in the living room. So, But my husband and I kind of carry forward my family tradition with that. And I think because we're always away with family, it's also nice to have a little bit of time, just the three of us in the morning while he opens, you know, what he's got in his pillowcase. So we did that. And then we went downstairs and had his bigger presents. And obviously adults had their presents. I gave my husband a present that I I came up with the idea for in like August. And I've been so excited to give to him. It's kind of too long a story to explain here. But basically there is a running joke in our family um, about a present that my husband always wishes he could give me. I'm not even going to repeat it because it makes it. It's one of those things that's absolutely ridiculous. If you explain it to anyone else, they're like, huh? Um, but, you know, it's funny to us. <laughs> and basically, I got, um, I commissioned um, this really great cartoon artist to draw a picture based on it. So he's got this really personal picture and it features all of us and, and our pet. And yeah, so I was really excited to give him that. And my son, um, for his main present, got a hoverboard. Um, I don't know why they call them hoverboards, because they don't hover at all. They're like a segway you know the little two-wheeled things and you stand on the platform um yeah so he's got one of those which he was delighted with um so yeah that was really fun and then we just hung out we like played with presents played with the kids we see my three-year-old niece was finding it all very exciting as well um christmas dinner i don't know about you where you are here in the UK, traditional Christmas dinner is a roast turkey and then like roast veg, like roast potatoes and all those things. Pigs in blankets, which is little sausages with bacon wrapped around them um, and stuffing. And my parents in law always do extra sausage meat. Um, so yeah, just a big old mound of food, which was very nice. My husband's vegetarian, so he made himself a nut roast the previous day and he had that. Um, yeah, and then we were all absolutely stuffed, as is tradition. <laughs> so um, we went for a little walk after that. I took my son out on his hoverboard and the first few minutes was we're like, oh, is he going to get the hang of this? But he did really quickly. And then he went through that to overconfidence, <laughs> giving me a heart attack because I kept thinking he was going to fall and break his neck. He was wearing a helmet and he was he was absolutely fine. But yeah. <laughs> And then we came back and um, like people were watching films and we played some games in the evening and it was just a really nice, relaxed day. I enjoyed it all a lot. Right, I'm going to write out some labels for my remaining colours that I've got here. So, and some bags. How many have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Not too many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. And oh, 
can't open that up. Ah, what's in there? Oh, those are really small stickers. I think I've got better ones than that. Yeah, I can write a bit more on the label because I like to, even though I keep my drills from different companies separate, I always write DAC on there as well, just in case they get mixed up. Right, so I'm gonna go through and do that now. Okay. It's nice doing um, a smaller kit where this stuff doesn't take ages. I have to say that's a distinct advantage to only having 23 colors. So where had I got to? So that was Christmas Day. The next day in the UK is known as Boxing Day. And I know that's not something that all countries observe. Um, I think it was something that traditionally came from people like, I'm sure I read once that people would make up a parcel for the postman or something like that. I don't know. But it's another day of holiday here. Um, so another day when no one's at work. So it's kind of part, part of the party. Um, but what we did was we went out for a nice walk. It was a really nice sunny day. So we went to this park where it felt like everyone else had gone to. <laughs> it was very busy. Um, my son went on his hoverboard again. And then the evening was more kind of, you know, drinks and games and just nice fun family time. Then the next day we went down to Cardiff where my family lives. So my family, when I was very young, used to do parties on both Christmas Day and Boxing Day. Um, so usually we'd be at my parents one of the days and then my grandparents the other day. And then as my grandparents got older, sadly they're not with us anymore, but just explaining why we do this, um, we would have a break in between. So <laughs> everyone found it too much doing a party two days in a row. So we would do Boxing Day plus one, as we called it, on the 27th. And basically that's what we still do now. So on the 27th, we got up and drove down to Cardiff and went to my sister's house. She was hosting this year. Um, I got there a bit early and helped her peel Amanda potatoes. <laughs> Everyone was bringing dishes. It was like a buffet type meal. Um, so yeah, a bit easier, although she put lots of effort in. It was a lovely day, really great. Um, there were a few more presents for people who hadn't seen each other yet. All my family came, apart from one niece. Um, because my brother is no longer with her mum, so um, she was off with her mum this year. Um, yeah, we had a really nice day. My son absolutely loves spending time with his cousins um, on my side of the family. Well, he loves his cousins on both sides of the family, don't get me wrong, but on my side of the family, they're older than him, so he gets all the fun and excitement of playing with older kids who, because he's their cousin and they love him, will, you know, give him the time of day. Whereas with my husband's family, he's the oldest and he enjoys playing with his younger cousins um, and is very fond of them. But, you know, you know how kids are. It's just different. <laughs> so we did that. That was a fun day. Um, stayed up far too late. Had a few too many drinks. <laughs> but it was all good fun. So we had a quiet day on the 28th then, just hanging out with my parents at their house. And in the evening, we got a takeaway. Um, we got some Chinese food. It was delicious, actually. Really nice from a place near my parents that they'd they'd had in the past. And we played some games. Um, that seems to have been a common theme, doesn't it? <laughs> a couple of board games. And then there's this card game that um, I don't know anyone outside my parents <laughs> um, who plays. Um, it's called Old Hell. I don't know where they got it from originally. It's kind of similar to the game Hearts, if you know that, which is another one that's not actually that common, so you may well not do, but with a few twists. And it's a game for four players. So whenever we see my parents, uh, we quite often play Old Hell, the four of us, and it's it's just funny. Um, we all really enjoy it. Uh, it didn't go very well for me this year. I got a really bad school. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was good fun. I always look forward to playing that. So then that took us to the 29th, which was the day we came home. And yeah, it was 
it was nice to get home at that point, you know, one of those where I've had a lovely time. I've really enjoyed all the time we've had with family, but now I would quite like to be at home in my own bed <laughs> for a few nights. So we got back, reunited with our cat, who had a great time with his cat sitter, who gave him loads of attention when we were gone. She's really sweet. She's becoming a good friend. And I, I just, I love knowing that he's in very, very safe hands when we leave him. So we had a fairly quiet couple of days and planned our New Year's Eve, which was just the three of us this year. Some years we'll see family or friends. This year we just we were keeping it fairly low key. Um, a few people who maybe we might have seen weren't free, but we had a really lovely time. What we did was like we've always kind of made quite a bit of New Year's Eve. Um, my son um, really enjoys that, you know, he enjoys being allowed to stay up late um, and just having a bit of a party. So we just did that at home, the three of us. Um, we got dressed up, um, we planned a free course meal that we all agreed on so everyone would be happy with it. So um, free course meal, um, heavily designed by a nine-year-old, was some sort of homemade chicken dippers. We found this fry mix that we sometimes have to make burgers for a treat at home because it tastes just like KFC um, and we really like that <laughs> so we made some little chicken dippers um, and had those and my husband's vegetarian so he had corn dippers and then our mains um, we all really like our garlic so I had a steak with some garlic butter my son had some lamb chops because he prefers those um, and my husband made himself a mushroom wellington, um, like a mushroom mixture in pastry. And then for dessert, we had a chocolate fondue. Um, my son got a chocolate fondue set for Christmas. So we tried that out with some marshmallows. My husband made some mini donuts. We had strawberries and grapes. Um, it was far too much food to be honest, it was really rich, <laughs> but it was it was delicious and it was fun. And we had cocktails and mocktails. My son loves a mocktail. Ever since we went on a cruise a few years ago with my family and all the kids were enjoying ordering their non-alcoholic cocktails. So he had a few of those. And we watched a film. We watched Turning Red at my son's request. So that was good. And then we had a bit of a dance party. Just put the music on loud and we're all dancing around our living room. Um, and then it was getting close to midnight. So we watched um, the fireworks. We put um, BBC One on where they show Big Ben, which is um, the big famous clock in London that if you've seen any London scenes, you've probably seen Big Ben. And that chimes in the new year. And then there's a big fireworks display near there in London. So we watched all of that. Uh, spoke to some of my family who are still up to wish everyone a happy new year. Um, and yeah, then we watched a bit of that, that show. And then, oh, there was a big Eurovision show on as well that went on till well into the early hours. So we watched a little bit of that until we all got too tired. Um, Eurovision is like this music show in Europe. Um, and it's just, yeah, you kind of have to look it up to know what it is if you don't already, because it's impossible to explain. But it's a lot of fun. We watch it most years. And this was um, a show with like previous acts who'd been on that. So we watched that until we were all tired and then we all went to bed. So it was a really nice night. You know, we had a lot of fun. We said we should do that a few times a year anyway. Just have a night where we make it a big special night at home, just the three of us. New Year's Day, we went for a nice walk by a reservoir. My son went on his hoverboard again, which was great because like, normally he complains if we go for a walk and now we have a way to get him on a walk happily. And that was about it. So that was our Christmas and New Year. And there we are, I'm done kitting down. That was so nice and easy. So I'm just gonna put these drills away and take out the bits from this storage case that are just to do with this painting. So, there we are, just that, which I will put upstairs in my notepad. And then 
this storage kit is now ready. I'm waiting for my next small kit that I will use it for that has less than 30 colours, which I have in mind for what I'm going to start soon. I hope you had as lovely a Christmas and New Year as we did. Um, yeah, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.